for more details on the story, we are being joined by Andrew Leung, an independent strategist who joins us live from Hong Kong. Andrew, first of all, welcome to Beyond. Now, China is set to pass this new security law for Hong Kong, which is being seen as anti-democratic. Firstly, do Hong Kong's legislators have any say in this at all, in the passing of this law? And will Chinese security agencies and agents be allowed to carry out operations on the ground in Hong Kong? Well, first of all, I think the whole thing has, been, has to be put into a bit of context. Um, don't forget that under Hong Kong's constitution, the so-called basic law, which of course is based on the joint declaration uh, with the UK uh, on the handover of Hong Kong, um, that um, Hong Kong's national security has got to be safeguarded by the enactment of so-called Article 23, specifically um, safeguarding national security against sedition, subversion, um, and the various other uh, kind of um, um, activities. Uh, but unfortunately, after 23 years, this law has remained unenacted. And in fact, a um, number of years ago, when an attempt was uh, uh, to enact the law, that sparked off a huge protest, and at the end, it had to be withdrawn. So after 23 years, um, the safeguard for national security uh, still remains unfulfilled. And um, now, um, in recent years, uh, this problem has been highlighted uh, by the massive uh, protests as well as violent activities, some bordering on terrorism. For example, the throwing of petrol bombs, uh, setting fire to police stations, um, and then causing a bodily injury to uh, ordinary citizens. Uh, and that rat, and also, above all, challenging uh, the Beijing sovereignty over Hong Kong by attacking the official organs uh, of Beijing in Hong Kong. Um, so I think, and also uh, increasingly, even uh, as, as recently as, la as last week, um, uh, black flags um, proclaiming Hong Kong's independence uh, have been unfurled. Um, and slogans uh, of self-determination, uh, separatism um, have become increasingly uncommon. Uh, common. And also, uh, of course, foreign uh, powers are seen openly uh, expressing uh, support uh, for some of these activists, including Joshua Wong, uh, openly, uh, who was in, uh, invited, um, un quite unprecedented, uh, to address uh, national institutions in the United States. And at the time when there was a across-the-board um, rivalry and, and antagonism uh, between the two countries, it's no surprise that Beijing's extremely worried uh, about Hong Kong's this loophole um, uh, on national security. Mm. And since Hong Kong is unable to enact the law because of the, all this opposition, so as a last resort, um, Beijing seeks to implement this law. Uh, again, this allowed, um, um, at least the mechanisms are, are concerned, by inserting it into the so-called Annex 3 uh, of the basic uh, law in Hong Kong. Now, Annex 3, of course, includes other laws, other national laws right. uh, proclaimed in China. But the problem, as you highlighted, is that by inserting this into Annex 3, uh, that bypasses uh, the scrutiny of Hong Kong's legislature. Absolutely. To un answer your question directly, whether Hong Kong's les legislature will have a say, the answer, of course, is not because it's a national law and Hong Kong's a special administrative region of China right. and because of the past a failure to enact this law because of the opposition uh, of the so-called uh, pro-democracy activists um, right. in the legislature is unlikely to, to seek um, agreement uh, of the local legislature. Right, so uh, now, you have, uh, let me just uh, ask a follow-up question. Now you have concern that Hong Kong legislators don't have uh, a say on this. Now Beijing may have certain legitimate concerns when they are passing this law, but a majority of people of Hong Kong recently turned out on the streets. More than one million people were on the streets demanding pro-democracy, if not independence from Beijing. Until now, these pro-democracy protesters were mostly being charged with rioting. But the new law mentions provisions like treason, sedition, subversion. Who will decide what is treason and sedition or simply wanting more rights? Is the new Chinese law likely to be used to silence these pro-democracy voices in Hong Kong? Well, let's um, um, answer it directly. I mean, the Beijing has already made it quite clear 
uh, that an enactment of this law uh, will not uh, affect Hong Kong's um, freedoms of expression, uh, assembly, and so on and so forth. Uh, and of course, the, the one country system will remain intact. However, it's the question of uh, to what extent um, and in what way uh, the law is being implemented and in what way Hong Kong's um, a very powerful uh, feature, which is the independence of Hong Kong judiciary, would have a say uh, in whether or not certain offences can be convicted. Now, I think that there is a, a um, news coming out uh, suggesting that uh, any kind of enforcement of this law would have to be subject to Hong Kong's laws uh, and safeguarded by Hong Kong judiciary. Uh, now, of course, that as to the definition uh, of sedition and subversion, um, don't forget that many countries uh, in the world, mm. um, I think including India, uh, and of course the United States, would have such law. Mm. Now, uh, how do you define this law, uh, the, the, the definition? I think it's a question of, of course, um, uh, the intent and also the acts. Uh, whether or not these can be proved um, according to this uh, initiative, uh, of course, uh, remains to be seen. But I think that according to the latest uh, news coming out, uh, they have to be subject to uh, right. Hong Kong's own laws, including Hong Kong judiciary. Right. Uh, now, um, Andrew, you know, in 2003, when Hong Kong tried to implement this security law, there was intense backlash on the streets. And we recently saw just last year more than a million people on the streets, uh, uh, you know, voicing their concerns, voicing, voicing their, uh, uh, you know, demands. Some, of course, these protests, some places were, in fact, violent as well. Now, China is stepping up aggression against Hong Kong and Taiwan at a time when global support for these territories is increasing. Are we likely to see a rise in pro-democracy protests once again in Hong Kong? And, you know, the world has questioned China's intentions about these new laws for Hong Kong, uh, from the U.S. to the European Union to the U.K. Everyone has uh, questioned China on this. Well, the, of course, the worry is understandable. I mean, including not only foreign observers, but also the people of Hong Kong. But I think that uh, as the comparison with the uh, anti-extradition bill uh, protests uh, is not um, uh, really appropriate in the sense that uh, under the um, extradition bill, uh, all these offenses could be uh, relatively minor. I mean, certain commercial kind of activities, especially involving uh, mainland uh, counterparts, uh, could be used as a kind of excuse. Uh, but in this case, uh, we're talking about sedition, uh, subversion, um, and matters of national security. Now, these charges are much a higher threshold. So that's the, uh, the, the first point. The second point is that uh, after the massive protests and huge disruption and violence in the streets, months and months of, of um, the city's uh, law and order grinding to the halt, I think a lot of the Hong Kong people have got a little bit tired mm. and also coming to the realization that some of these so-called activists um, they, could, um, they are not really just for a democracy, and they are using extreme measures threatening the lives um, and stability of the economy, which is no good to everybody. So I think that uh, what is most important, what remains to be seen, is to, uh, before the law is enacted, uh, is to see what sort of safeguards um, is, is going to be introduced in the law and also um, highlighting the role to be played by Hong Kong's internationally respected uh, judiciary. Right, Andrew, thank you so much for joining us uh, on this broadcast. Uh, certainly all eyes on the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference that is currently underway and uh, all eyes will be on China whether in fact this law is passed regarding Hong Kong.